everyone! My name is Emily Guthrie Plouffe, and I'm a Collections Management Intern here at the Provincial Archives of Alberta. I know a lot of you have been cleaning out your homes during the pandemic, and you've likely come across some old family records. Maybe you didn't even know you'd held on to these items, or maybe you're the designated archivist of your family and everyone sends their records to you. Either way, I know tackling multiple generations worth of records can be overwhelming. So today, I want to walk you through the basics of organizing, documenting, and preserving your family archives. Last summer, I began working on my own archives project for my mom's side of the family. I was able to order most of my material through the PAA retail store, including boxes, file folders, photo sleeves and envelopes, plastic clips, tissue paper, and pencils. These products are designed to preserve your records for as long as possible, as well as keep them organized. In the second part of this video, we will discuss these items in more detail. Now I will show you an example of a box of records I have rehoused by moving them carefully from their original storage, sometimes decades old, to their new archival quality containers. Handle your records delicately while doing this, as some may be damaged or brittle, and use gloves when touching photographs and other film products to prevent fingerprint transfer. Here you can see I have labeled the new boxes and folders with numbers and titles to keep them in order. You can find labels like this easily online or in retail office supply shops. Remember to look for ones that say acid-free or archival quality. Label each box and folder starting from one. On the box label, include the box number and indicate which folders are inside. You can print this information on the labels using your home printer or handwrite them in ink. On your folders, use pencil and write a title in the center of the folder. You can either use an existing title from the original folder, or create your own related to the contents of the file. On the right side of the folder, record the date range of the records inside. On the front flap of the folder, pencil the folder number in the top right corner so it's easy to spot without taking the folder out of the box. Once you have rehoused your records and labeled everything, document the important details in a notebook or digital spreadsheet. This makes it easy for you and your family to quickly find the records you're looking for. Starting from box 1, folder 1, make a list of all the folders in your collection. Include the box and folder numbers, the folder title, folder dates, and any special notes you'd like to include. If you are using a spreadsheet, store a copy on an external hard drive or a USB drive in case anything happens to your computer. Using a spreadsheet also allows you to easily email copies to your family as well as print copies. Something you might be wondering about when rehousing your records is whether you should reorganize them. I know a big part of that overwhelming feeling of going through your family records comes from there being no logical structure to how they've been stored. If the records are already organized in a way that makes sense to you, save yourself some time and rehouse them just as they are. But, if you feel like they're just a big jumble, take a look at our Family Histories publication, available for free in PDF format on our website. You'll find the link in the description. This is a great resource as it suggests logical categories you can use to organize your records and goes into detail on what you should and shouldn't keep. On that note, I'll be the first one to say I love to keep everything, and I know that family records hold different value for different people. Usually people are in one of two camps, keep it all or throw it all out. Here at the archives, we caution against destroying everything as you can never know what your family members will want to access in the future. As they say, one person's junk is another person's treasure. At the end of the day, these are your family records, and there are no absolute rights or wrongs. If they hold sentimental value for you or a family member, you should keep them. But if you do choose to get rid of any records, make sure you do so securely to protect your and your family's privacy. We recommend shredding records before you throw them away. The last step, of course, is to safely store your records so you and your family can access and enjoy them for many years to come. It's best to keep your records in a cool, dark, and dry place. If you've decided to store them in the basement, it's especially important to remember not to place your boxes directly on the floor, but instead on a pallet or shelf to protect them from flooding. For more on what to do if your records do get wet, check the description below for a link to a video from our conservator Allison. Keep an eye out for pests mice and bugs that might want to munch on all that paper. If you notice any pests or other new damage and you're not sure what to do, give our conservator a call. The info is in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope by now you feel equipped to start preserving your family's legacy. Check out the description below for a link to our online retail store where you can find all your home archive supplies as well as contact information if you have any further questions. If you wish to watch a breakdown of the products we have featured in this video, stay tuned for part two. Best of luck!